This video that you guys are about to watch is from my Omni model course. If you want access to the entire course for free, yes, for free, you can get it by going to my website at allentrades.me. The link will also be in the description below. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so we just finished section one and now we are moving on to section two. We just went over what is day trading, brokers, some account terminology related to brokers, the different type of markets that you can trade, what are candlestick charts, and I gave you guys a full in-depth tutorial of TradingView, the platform that I use when I look at the charts, and then we finished it off with the different type of traders that you can possibly be. So now let's move on to section two. So here, I wanted to tell you guys a little story. So prior to the 1990s, everything used to be controlled by humans. And what do I mean by that? Mm. I mean, humans controlled where the price was going to go, when the price was going to get there and how the price got there. So the pattern that it followed to get to where it needed to get to by a certain time period. But after the 1990s, technology started to improve and the delivery mechanism, how price got to where it needed to get to was now controlled by artificial intelligence. Humans still control when and where price will go, but now they leave it up to AI to control how it will get there. It's much more efficient for it to be this way. Unlike humans, AI doesn't get tired. They don't need days off. They can work as long as you have that system running. So these algorithm, algorithms rely on time factors like the time of day, day of week, week of month, and month of year. And we use this timing element to better anticipate when the markets are more likely to move. Now, because the primary focus of this course is on day trading. Yes, I'm going to give you guys step-by-step -step trading plans for weekly swing and position trading, but the primary focus is day trading. So the, the times that we want to focus on are the days of the week and the times of the day, because anything above that is not really important when it comes to day trading and scalping. So when it comes to time of the week or day of the week, we want to look at the economic calendar. What is that? The economic calendar is basically the economic reports and when they come out for each country. Each country has their own economic reports and you can find it on so many different platforms. The platform that I like to use is called forexfactory.com. That's what I use at the time of this recording. I don't know when you're watching this. Maybe they're still in business. Maybe they're not. But you can do a quick Google search to find the economic calendar for any country. Now, the reason why the economic calendar is important is because it's going to tell you when volatility will most likely be injected into the market, when the market will move the most. And as traders, all we need is opportunity. We don't care where the market is going, if it's going up or if it's going down, we just need it to move, which will give us opportunity. So that is why volatility is so important for us as traders. So here I have a picture of a week. This is using Forex Factory, like I was telling you guys before. And you can see that there are orange and red folders. So what I like to do is I like to click on the top green box in the right corner. That's the filter button. And I like to only look at medium and high impact news. So the medium news is going to be orange and the high impact is going to be red. When you first go to a website like forexfactory.com, it's going to show you bronze and silver folders, which are the lower tier news, but that doesn't really have a big impact on the market. Now, when I say these news reports have a big impact, it's not the news itself that's controlling where price is going to go. Rather, they use it as a smoke screen. So when you look at CNBC or all these other news networks and the market has moved in such a drastic measure, they can say, oh, the market moved because XYZ news came out and that is why the market's tanking or the market is rallying. When in fact, the market was going to go there regardless of what the news report says. And the reason why I know this is because there's been times when a certain news report came out and it was actually in favor of the U.S. dollar, but the U.S. dollar tanked. So if that was the case, every time news reports came out that was in favor of the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar should rally. But that's not always the case because the U.S. dollar is going to go wherever it's supposed to go. Rather, these news reports are used as smoke screens. So going back to the picture. You can see on Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, we have high impact news, the red folders. Now, on Tuesday, we have CPI. CPI is one of those news events that is just bigger than most others. There's a couple that we're going to go over later in the course, but a few 
that you should definitely know about is CPI, FOMC, and NFP, which happens the first Friday or typically the first Friday of every month. So we have CPI on Tuesday. Thursday, we have core retail sales at 8.30 a.m., followed by regular retail sales and unemployment claims. And then on Friday, we have the PPI numbers coming out at 8.30, followed by another high impact news at 10 a.m. So the reason why we want to look at the economic calendar before we start our trading week is now we know that on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday are probably going to be the most volatile days, the best opportunity days. Now, this doesn't mean you can't trade on the other days. It's just why wouldn't you want to know when the most volatility is going to occur? So now that we know that, let's look at how price traded during this week. So here I have a weekly chart or a chart of the entire week on the 15 minute chart for the NASDAQ 100. I split each day with the blue dotted lines. So you can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the yellow lines delineate the different weeks. So this is one week, the week that you were looking at from that economic report. And you can see I have highlighted the high impact news. So you can see on Tuesday, that CPI news that I was telling you guys about at 8.30 a.m., you can see we had a lot of volatility injected into the market and you can see it tank lower very fast. Then we move over to Thursday, the next high impact news. You can see right at 8.30, we trade up a little bit higher, taking out the high that was there earlier in the day and then we tank lower. There goes your volatility for that day. Then we move over to Friday. Now remember, Friday had two impact, high impact news events, one at 8.30 and one at 10 a.m. You can see right at 8.30, we tank lower and we tank very fast. But then right at 10 a.m., we make the low of the day and we reverse and retrace higher, giving you two opportunities to trade. You could have traded that going lower or you could have traded it going higher. This is why you have to be wary of what the economic calendar is. If you're not looking at the economic calendar, you're going and trading blind. You can be looking at the chart, 8.30 comes and then boom, this big tank drops the market lower and you're like, what's happening? I have no idea. Rather, if you had looked at the economic calendar, you would expect a market move like that to happen. So with all this knowledge, knowing when the market is most likely going to move, what can you do with it? Well, you can wait for 8.30 to come. So let's say you had CPI. You can wait for 8.30 to come, see what the market does, and then trade based off that rather than being in front of that freight train. Let the market do what it wants to do at 8.30 and then trade after that high impact news. Don't try to position yourself before that because sometimes it is a bit of a wild card. It may go up really high, really fast, and then tank or vice versa, go down really fast and then rally. So you want to give it some time to sort itself out. Let all the other people, let all the gamblers position themselves ahead of 830. We don't care about it. And that is pretty much it when it comes to timing the day of the week and knowing what days are going to most likely be in your favor, the days that you really want to make sure you're looking at the charts. So now that we know what the optimal times of the week are to trade, now let's talk about the optimal times of the day. And we'll talk about that in the next video.